There, so it's recording now and I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. We'll go here, share. Well, I am Mary Ann from Waterlink Web and I'm really excited about uh, the 2021 theme. I have enjoyed a lot of the WordPress themes. I like the fact they're free. I like the fact they're fast. Uh, last spring, I did a presentation on the 2020 theme so this is just, um, you know, the next theme. And I have built now two websites using this theme. They're very different from each other. I'm going to go over both of the websites and some of the plugins I used, as well as some of the CSS I used to, um, to change how things looked and so forth. So this first one is called the Bakery Study. And um, Loving Baked Goods from San Francisco and Beyond and it's by a popular San Francisco blogger and if I happen to be related to. <laughs> so uh, this is, you know, you hear about food diaries where you, you uh, record all the diet food you eat. Well, this is a pleasure food diary. So it's quite a bit different from a regular food diary. And on this website, we set up the, the blog posts to actually be on the home page. There's blog posts on the, page, on the home page, but then below that, there's some of the pictures. And what is cool about the 2021 theme is they introduce this thing of being able to overlap um, columns. So we are able to overlap these pictures here. And um, there's also a way to sign up for the bakery, uh, the bakery study blog. And I'll show you what email, uh, what uh, blog uh, plugin I'm using for that. So. And um, also how I got website by Waterlink Web on here, because that's one thing with the, uh, with the WordPress themes, you get this regular little, you know, powered by WordPress and it doesn't go back to your uh, website. So I'm gonna go into the background here or the back door or the dashboard. <clears throat> okay. So what are some of the plugins and things that I've used on this website? First, let's go to all pages from here. The home page, we go to edit that. So this is the image that I put up on there. And um, get you this, let me just minimize that there. Okay, so this image on, on this page is set up to be the full width image. If you look here, it's aligned full width. And I made it pretty narrow because I didn't want it to take up too much space going up and down. But there's all these different ways you can set up images. So I'll scroll down here a little bit to where we have these images. So this one here is set up using the borders. Okay, so you can see how there's a border around it. And this one here is also set up with borders, but this one is set up with a frame. Um, you can also change these to be rounded. Let's say we wanted this one rounded. We just go like that and it's rounded. It's that easy. Um, the other thing is there's columns here. Let me get that. See, this is a column. This is the columns a column block style. I've set this up to be wide width. And when you have columns, you can have as many as you, well, you can have several, but we have two on here. And we set this up so they actually, um, let me get this in, will actually inter interact, intersect a little bit. So I'm trying to remember how I did that. But anyway, when you set up columns, you can make them intersect, which is kind of cool. And something you, you may want to do at times there. Let me get back to this columns here. So that's that's one thing you can do. I'll, I want to just illustrate how to do that. Let's go down here. We're going to add a columns block. There it is, columns. And we'll add two columns. And we're going to align this to be wide width the same way. Get 
first let's put a picture in it. So we'll put an image in. And we have insert from the media library. We'll put uh, this one in, select. And then we'll put this image in, put a different one in, insert from the media library. Oh, that cake was so good. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you have two pictures in here. Now you can change this alignment. We'll make it wide width. Actually, no, we want the columns block to be wide width. And how do I make this wide width? I know I've had it be here before. No. No. Dang. Okay. Columns block. Wide width. There we go. I need to just hit the right thing. So now we have these two, but we want them to kind of intersect a little bit. And this theme will do that. I just have to remember how. <laughs> Go back here. Oh no. Go forward there. And dance, not set, styles. Ah, right over here. You see default? You see overlap? Now they overlapped. And I'm going to have this one have um a frame around it i'm going to have this one have a frame around it so let's preview what that would look like scroll back down and there it is so that is a pretty simple way of doing it uh to make your pictures overlap and i think it's a nice it's a nice effect on certain blog posts uh certain pages so Close out of there, and I will take this away. Before I, why don't I answer questions about how to do this particular thing on a website? Um, any questions about how to make the columns and make them overlap? Are we still there? Um, I don't, uh, Doug Noel. Yes, uh, could you pull down the default style? What are the choices under the default style selection on the right? Okay, so here on the right, these are the default style sections for pictures. So I just made this a rounded style. Um, this is the, the frame style. <laughs> this style is, that's the default right there but I could put a border on it if I wanted to. Oh, I see. And below that where it says default style, the, the pull down menu. Pull down menu. Show it, me where that is. Drop your cursor down below those thumbnails. Keep going, keep going there. Right here? Yeah, what's under that? Okay. Oh, I see, I get it. I think this is where you would set the style for the whole, for the block. Or maybe if you want, I, I mean, I haven't experimented with that because I've been kind of using different things or this client wanted different things on, you know, different uh, kinds of, of yeah. pictures. But um, if you wanted to set it so always have the same style, you always wanted your pictures rounded, you always wanted them framed or et cetera, then you would pick that, I think. Thank you. I think that's how that works. I haven't, honestly, I haven't used it. I haven't used the default. That's why it's not set. What other questions on okay. that? Uh, Sue's got a question. Hi, Marianne. Can you change the frame um, width or color or anything like that? I believe you would be able to do that with CSS. Uh, only with CSS, okay. I think, well, well, let's see. I just didn't know if there's an option tucked away somewhere or. Okay, sometimes there are. Image settings, no. Let me get this out of the way. Um, image size is large. No, I wouldn't change that. 
No, I think you'd have to use CSS to do it. Okay, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, any other questions on how to do this? Um, I don't see anyone. Else. Okay, well, I'm gonna delete this because I don't know that my client wants to have this on her website. I'll show you an easy way to delete columns. You have a, you start a paragraph, you just hit return and I hit delete, 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 delete. There it goes, everything's deleted. And you go back and update it. So um, this you may want to change at some point because this happened in December. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that. How do you replace an image? You hit replace on it. If you, for some reason it goes off to the left, so you have to kind of pull it in. Open Media Library. Let's put this cake in there instead. Select. And we'll change this. And well, this is the gonna be the honey walnut cake. From Cinderella. There. I made a, a executive decision. I hope you're okay with that, Allie. She doesn't answer. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's two of the things that I think is pretty cool about this theme. I'm gonna talk about um, customizing it too. So in here, site identity, this is where you would have your, your title and your uh, tagline, okay? And then we'll just go down here, uh, colors and dark mode. So you can pick whatever color you want here. And we pick this color, but it, I'll show you on the other thing, it's just, it really looks, any kind, of, any kind of color would be then the background color of the website. But there's also ways to make it not to be on the page. So I'll talk about that in the next theme. This is if you want a background image on here. Some people do want a background image. Um, and then the widgets are only in the bottom. There's only three widget areas. So uh, this is where you'd put, you know, a, a, we have our, our email subscription list, okay? And then we have recent posts up there. The last five recent posts are listed and then post categories. So those just come in pretty easily. Does anybody have any questions about adding things to a footer? I mean, to a widget area. Yeah, I, I, I guess I do. I um, couldn't quite see how you were able to make uh, the three uh, widgets go in there. Okay. That's a good question. The point is there's three widget areas. Well, let's rephrase, rephrase that. We can play with this a little bit. So when I added these, there was three widgets, okay? If we added another widget, let's do a, um, we'll add a navigation menu widget and we'll select a menu, primary menu. And you see how it, it comes in down below? So what that means to me is that you're gonna add three widgets. And if you have six, there'll be three more underneath the first three. Okay. So I think that's what that means. They're just gonna line up one, two, three. And then if you have right. four, you're gonna have one that's longer. You'll have two and one you know, and the, this section and this uh, section two and three will be just the one widget. Okay. Right on. Okay, thank you. And you got to put the website by Waterlink Web right below that. I'm gonna show you how I do that too. Okay. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay, so that's widgets. Uh, homepage settings. This is just, I want uh, the homepage to be a homepage and the blog posts are gonna be on the blog page, but I'm adding them obviously to the home page. They're linked there. So I should show you how I did that. Uh, let's go back and I'll show you how I did that. 
So again, we're on the home page. This is a block, a paragraph block, another paragraph block. And what is all this? Let me go back. I opened up the. This is a block type. And it is the, give me a second. It is the, I didn't want columns. No, I didn't want that. What block type is that? Let me add it again. If you go up here and you go search for blocks, I think that is the, the post block, which is, look at this one. This is the list view. Latest post. Latest post. Thank you. I knew somebody would know what that was. So we go up here. Latest post. That's the post. That's the block. And then you can edit it from here. Once you're in it, I can say what I want to see, show. So if I want, um, I'll get this. I'll get rid of this right now. Remove block. And go back up here to my mid latest posts. And so now you see you have on the latest post block, I want to have post content, but only exact excerpt, only 30 words. I want to display the author name, but not the date. I want to display the featured image, but only in a size medium that's 300 by 300. Alignment, I want the uh, image aligned on the left and the content on the right. I would order it by newest to oldest and I want to have up to five. And all that is all added with the one latest post block. That's pretty nifty. You can of course change this around. If you wanted larger images, you could do that. You could have the line center and put a larger image in. Um, you could put this, this post dates in if you wanted. You could have a longer excerpt or, or maybe have nothing except the title in. Um, those are some of the things you can do with that latest post block. And that's the, how that was added. So let's go ahead and, and update that. We didn't really change anything. Um, this right here, I think that's an, that's, let me see what that is, view page. Okay. This I think is an HR, uh, um, a break, page break. No, it isn't. That's part of the latest post, post block. It has this top to it and this bottom to it with the smaller HR lines in between. Okay, any questions about the latest post block? Nope. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Steve Young? Yes, Steve. Uh, yeah. Um, is this Elementor or which editor is this? I guess I missed that. Oh, good question. This is Gutenberg. Gutenberg, okay. This uh, is the WordPress editor. I have, I've never actually used Elementor, so. Uh, that's what we use and that's what I was wondering. Um, also, in place of a photo, can you put a video? Ah, uh, no, okay. not that I'm aware of because the featured image, this photo comes from the featured image and I'll show you that on the post when I log into one of the posts and examine it. Okay, thanks. Okay. But yeah, it's amazing what you can do with these posts with these different blocks. And there's so many. Uh, you can add, I'll, I'll show you how to add audio. Uh, I have a, the next po blog, uh, the next website covers that. You can add a calendar. I mean, it's, I mean there's stuff I haven't even used all of blo different post types. There's, there's so many of them. Okay, let's go back to uh, our appearance and customize. So we kind of went over some of the things. Uh, we went over how to add widgets and where they are on this. We went over the homepage settings. 
I've never really worried about the excerpt settings. I just put summaries on there. I'm not sure. Okay, additional CSS. So on this site, I didn't really have to do any. <laughs> that is, now if my client had wanted a different color for certain things, we would have to, uh, of course, add CSS in there, but we don't on this site. I'll, the next one, you'll see a different colors for things. But um, somebody mentioned changing the border, for example, on the pictures. So you would, to do that, I have a, uh, an inspector add-on added to my Chrome. So this would be entry content. You kind of right click and you kind of look through things. And there's the block image. I'm not, you know, you have to kind of search for what it is um, and find it in there and then try to find the element. And I did a lot of that in the next website, so I'll cover it there. Um, there's quite a bit of, of CSS on the next website. Let's look at one of the blogs. Big Trouble in Little China, part one by the bakery editor. Okay, so let's edit this post. See how it, how it plays out. So there's the content and she added all the pictures and everything. If you look over here, the featured image is this. Okay, and it, you don't see it on this post itself, do you? But you do see it when we view post, it comes up there at the top. So this featured image with this theme, when you put the featured image, it will come in up at the top of the blog post itself. Just so you know that. Um, what other things we wanna talk about? on posts, let's see. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, we've got each, each of these is just a paragraph block, that's an image block. Uh, I'll show you another couple plugins I'm using on this website. So I added SG Optimizer on this website. And I did that because my client uh, was having trouble resizing images for web. And so by adding the SG Optimizer, that does it automatically. So these webs, these, these images are going up, obviously, without any changing in the name of the image. She does put a, a alt text on there. I did teach her to do that. When this went up, and she does resize it, she sizes it so it's not 4,000 pixels across, which is great. But nevertheless, the, the, the pixel optimizer reduced the size of this file by 91.71%. So my guess is when it went up, it was a whole lot bigger than 23 gigabytes or KBs or whatever those are. But yet the picture looks great on the page. So that optimizer is really saves your website a lot of, a lot of uh, baggage that it doesn't need to have. Uh, any questions on, and actually, any questions on, on that particular plugin, the um, SG optimizer? Yes, um, I'll ask a real quick I mean, question. I mean, Isn't uh, that a server perfect. side plugin? Isn't that like unique to like SiteGround, that SG Optimizer? I, I, I misspoke. I meant short pixel image optimizer. This is the one we're using for pixels. Optimizes images automatically. I can go over some of the settings on it. So this is how I have this configured. Um, I resize this to a maximum of that size. Uh, nothing difficult, a lot of stuff. I and mean, you don't really need to do uh, thumbnails. That's the one thing I don't resize because they're so small to begin with. So 
So yeah, it's not SG Optimizer, it's Short Pixel Image Optimizer. Any questions on that? Yeah, does, does that work with um, uh, all the photos as you upload them to put them in the media library so that the media library stays a smaller size or only when it gets displayed? All pictures as you upload them. Okay, because I'm looking at it on my smartphone in that photo of the uh, Chinatown or whichever it was, it looks fabulous. Uh, it's a great photo. I get lots of detail on it uh, on my smartphone, and um, and the um, uh, the website is a uh, oh what's the word? I forgot the word. The, the baby it, study. Yeah, well, it can. It, it looks good on a smartphone format. I forgot the name for that word. Yeah. That's well, like, yeah, if you're looking at this picture, it's 57 K, KBs. So that's pretty small, but it was reduced by 90.90% basically. Okay. And yeah. then that's the title under the picture and I get the entire uh, blog post. And the picture's a little bit larger, but it looks beautiful. The shading of the sky and everything looks very smooth. There's no uh, degradation of quality. I just thought I'd point that out. Right. Yeah, no, this is a really good plugin. And there's, you can get it for free. If you only use it a little bit, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so if you use it a lot, and I, I have it on a bunch of different clients' websites, so I pay them a small amount and, you know, it's, it's not an expensive plugin to use. One thing I would recommend if you can rename your, your, your images before you upload them, because this should be, title should be Chinatown, San Francisco. And then the alt text could be a street scene from Chinatown, San Francisco. This is, would be just a little bit better SEO if you resize, if you rename the image. Um, I always like to think about the SEO aspect on this. So, that's just a just a tip. Uh, let's look at some other plugins we have on here. I am using Sassy Social Share, and Sassy Social Share is pretty easy to use. Let me find it in here someplace. Uh, Sassy Social Share, here it is. So, I'm just using the standard interface. I'm just using a free one. Um, this is where you select what ones you want to be on your website. So I kind of selected print and LinkedIn and Twitter and I selected Tumblr and, you know, Facebook and all that. Um, it's really easy to set up. And when you visit the website, if you scroll down at the bottom of the page, it should be up there. It's not, okay, it's just on the blog post is where we have it set up to go. And I saw it here a minute ago, Mama Sita. I saw it a minute ago, I swear it was up here. Where did it run away to? Huh. Refresh. I know I saw a little bit ago. Okay, well, where did it go? What <laughs> are we looking for again? Sassy social share. I saw it up there on the website. But it doesn't seem to be there right this minute. Marianne, I saw it on the front page when you were first talking about it. Page. It's not showing up to me. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Do you guys see it? No, it's gone now. Okay. Let's go to a different blog page. Let's go to one we haven't opened yet. We'll go to Walk in the Rain. Ah, I think it's only coming up like when I first log into the page. That's interesting. But here, you have Facebook. Um, all these are the ones that we're set up to share with. I thought Tumblr was up here too. I thought it was. Let's go to the dashboard. I think they're just afraid to promote their own products because the government will sue you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, anyway. There's, there's different ways to set it up. You can set it so it's round or square, standard interface. 
Uh, I again, I'm doing the free one on this, so it's you know, but it works. This particular client uh, doesn't actually have a Facebook page and doesn't actually have a a, a, a a Twitter account or anything like that. But we wanted to make it so that people could share it if they wanted to in social media. Okay, another plugin we're using here, and this one I I have used on a couple websites is the email subscribers and newsletters. And with this plugin, you add it in and then people can subscribe to your website and they will receive the email automatically when you send, when you, um, send it out. I'm gonna to go to some of the settings on that. Email subscribers. Okay, so she has like 20, 12 active co uh, contacts right now. And um, there's a paid version to this too, which I haven't set up. You go to the settings. <coughs> so it tracks, opens, it does all this for you. There is one thing we had to fiddle with. This is a message to display after a form submission. That means that they receive their they have to check and say, yeah, we want to get that to unsubscribe. You subscribed. Um, and then there's another, another things, notifications. And um, I'm going to show you one of the blog posts, one of the emails that we get. Email sending. <coughs> okay. It doesn't send them immediately. It'll send them out in like 15 minute, minute increments. So that even if you have a lot of emails, say a thousand to go out, thousand subscribers, they won't overwhelm your server. It only sends like 30 at a time, which is kind of nice. Um, and then it has user roles and so forth. Let me show you an email that I received, if I get to my Gmail account, I'm going to go to the bakery study. New post published. That's how it looks when it comes in. Looks like that. And you can just <coughs> click right here and read the read the post. So that's, uh, you know, just this is a message. You have a new published, a new blog article on our website, and they can go right to it. And there's the disclaimer and the, um, if you want to subscribe right there, et cetera. So it's all legal. There was one tiny plug uh, setting that I had to, ah, image size. When it comes out of the box, it'll say thumbnail there, make it full size. Because that way it, it shows up way better than if you have a thumbnail. When it comes into the person's email box, if it's thumbnail, it still shows full size, but it's all grainy and pixelated. But if you say it comes out full size, then it'll come out looking really good. That was the only real trick in setting this up. We did a couple post before we figured that out. Uh, any questions on the email subscribers? Uh, Steve, do you still have the, your hand up from before or do you have a new question? All right, uh, Doug Moyle. Uh, yes. Uh, Marianne, this uh, plugin we're looking at, um, did you say you've got it set up to automatically send these emails out every time you make a blog post? Yes. Okay. And what was the name of it again? It's called Email Subscribers. Uh, let me get the exact name of it. And this is the second website I have it set on. Email Subscribers and Newsletters. And are you able to design the email at all? Can you 
have any influence on the look of the email that's sent out or is it just? Yes, because it has kind of a, a little bit of an email. Uh, to a certain extent, you can. Okay. To a certain extent, you can. Um, and there's, there's campaigns. Um, this is a welcome to subscribers. So if you, if you look at this, there's a way to edit that. Um, let's see what this says. A new post is published and it says the name of the post. I'm sure I could put out something else here. Um, if you only wanted certain categories to go out, you could select categories there. If you had different categories of posts, um, et cetera. And it only sends an email. It doesn't connect to any of your social media? No, okay. only sends an email. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, for a free plugin to send an email, you're not paying for anything. You know, it works fine. And I like how it works better than the Jetpack. The Jetpack has a email subscription also, but I just think this one looks better. I thought it, when it comes through, it, you know, if you set the picture image to be uh, the right size and everything, it, it comes through quite nicely and makes you go right back to the website to read the blog post. Oh, one more quick question. Did you notice if it had any integration to sending this stuff to maybe an existing mail setup you might have, like if you're using MailChimp or something? Um, no, it does not integrate with MailChimp. Okay. But okay, my cool. guess is the pro version has some functionality that I don't know about. We went pro. There's probably things you can do. Um, okay, it has email templates. Um, there's going to be stuff you can do with the pro that maybe you can't do on the on the free version. I like the way though that it's set up. Um, Okay, there's other things on there. That's the pro version of it. So we're leaving. Okay. So I think I'm done with this with this blog, with this particular website, unless there's some questions on it. Any, Any other questions? No, thank, thank you for that. Um, so um, this is really simple. This is a really simple site. So this may not be the right place to ask this question, but you know the world is going mobile, and um, you know you talked a little bit about being responsive. But uh, it seems like we need to be proactive about designing for mobile. Um, did they do anything interesting in 2021 to make that easier or more straightforward? Well, I didn't Already have done. to do anything. It works great on mobile phone, so. WordPress is always designed to be quick, lightweight, uh, mobile friendly. Every WordPress theme that's been out for you know a number of years is going to do that for you. Yeah, I'm, I, and I appreciate that. And you know, it's it's very responsive. My, I, what I can't get my head around because I'm an old guy is you know I have this huge monitor and I want to design and make it all look good. I want to see this skyline going all the way across the screen. And then I go look at it on the phone and everything is responsive. But I'm wondering if we should start designing mobile first and then think about full screen as more of the exception. Can I chime in here? Uh, this is David. Yeah, um, go ahead. The, the 2021 theme is actually the first theme uh, from the WordPress team that is designed mobile first. And it's called responsive backwards to a lot of people. So it's actually a mobile design that works well on the desktop as opposed to the, to the other way. Um, uh, the menu was actually designed mobile first as well. And in the full site editing version of this, uh, which is coming up in a matter of a uh, couple of weeks, uh, they build upon that as well. Oh, thank you, David, because I've been looking at it on my smartphone while she's doing that. And I am just uh, quite impressed with how good it all looks on my mobile. So you you explained it thoroughly as to why they, they started there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks for that. I, uh, I'm going to talk about another website now. Real to real. So entirely different, you know, same exact theme, same theme, but a lot more design went into it. This client had a website that was built maybe 10 years ago. And she liked a lot of things about it, but uh, some of it just wasn't very functional. And I knew I could do a lot better and also uh, improve the SEO on her website. So I rebuilt it. And um, of course, it looks like an entirely different thing, but it's really not a different thing. So let's go and talk about uh, this website a little bit. So this was her original logo. She wanted to keep that. This color, this background color came off the other website. Um, she has uh, pictures that were actually on the other website were smaller, but this is the same image and it came out bigger on this website. One thing I like about this is the is how narrow the, the content columns are because this is so easy to read. When you have content that goes across the width of a website, or a width of a page on the, on the internet, it looks hard to read just because it's so wide. When it's narrow like this, it looks easy to read. It can be the same exact content. People will be more likely to read something that's narrow than something that's wide. So, and then I just, uh, oh, I created a replica a block that uh, you can use over and over again that has her all that signatures on the bottom. Again, you can see the three uh, widget areas. And uh, oh, I'll talk about this here. I forgot to mention that last time. And I also, I added a, the menu again at the bottom on this. So let's talk about this website a little bit. So we'll go into the dashboard. And um, I think I'm gonna talk about customizing it first. So. Again, we have the site identity. This, uh, this client records people's personal stories and then saves them and they can uh, use them for their, their, give them to their grandkids and their children and save them for the family's historical record of the, of the family. Um, that's a color that came off the original website. Just put it in there. No background image. Menus, just have the one menu. Um, widget areas are all just HTML, uh, custom HTML widgets. Just She just wanted a little content in there. That's all those are. Uh, homepage settings, really nothing extra. Okay, additional CSS. Look at all the CSS on this site. So there wasn't any in the last one, but this one we needed to. So, um, I needed to resize the logo background a little bit. I wanted this background to be white so we could see her logo on it. Because without the background being white, you would miss all the blue in there, correct? And it wouldn't show up. So basically I right clicked and found the space, created the background color. And then I change the size on here because I wasn't liking how it was how it was sized it automatically and so I changed the size on it. So uh, that's a CSS on that. So site dot site dash logo dot custom dash logo and then picking the width and height that work good for this logo. Um, adding a background color to navigation on hover. So you see that it came with a different background color. I changed it to this uh, darker blue that matches the blue in here. Um, also, there's a name on the left in the navigation. It's like the name of the site, Real to Real, was showing up here, like a site branding. And I displayed none on that. Um, this styles the navigation a little bit, gave it a different color added some padding. And there was a lot of, of space between the navigation and the first piece of content. If you look on this website, 
you see how that that space there there was I this has a picture which makes it okay but on this one it didn't have a picture down there and it just was like too much space and so I removed some of that space uh, right here padding bottom zero um, let's see oh I added a specific Yoast FE FAQ block, and I'll show you how I use that. But again, it didn't the pat the font didn't match the website. It's coming from Yoast, and so I changed it there. Um, another space where I thought there was too much content uh, space was um, below the content and above the footer. Right in here, there was a lot of space. If we go up to this website, let's see what it looks like. See, we left this space here. I think it looks okay on this website. On this one, I didn't really like it, so I removed it. Um, I styled the testimonials plugin. That's a plugin I'm gonna show you how I use it. And that's all the styling on there. Um, so any questions on the CSS with the website itself? or how to use that, how to get CSS. I don't see any hands. Okay, that was so completely clear. Um, when the video was posted, you'll, you could be able to, if you really wanna see all that, all that CSS, you can uh, watch the video and then stop it. And then you'll be able to copy the content off of there and figure it out. Okay, let's talk about some of the plugins on this website. Not many. I use Easy Testimonials. I really like this plugin for testimonials because it includes a schema markup so that Google knows this is actually a testimonial that's being put up here. Um, remove footer credit is what I use to change the uh, credit on the footer. And then the Yoast SEO is what we're using to add the FAQ pages. So let's go and look at the FAQ pages. Oh, I have to talk about this too. We'll talk about this first. This is the year where I put the Yoast SEO. Yoast FAQ, I should say. These are all frequently asked questions. And this has the question and the answer. A question and the answer. And so let's edit this. Edit this page. And you'll see how I did it. OK. So this is an image that I, up, I took off the original website and I added this and then I made it a wide width and that's why that's that wide. Also, because it's an image and I wanted that content in there, you can see for SEO purposes, you wanna always have an alt text. I actually wrote picture and testimonial quote for your questions answered page and here's the whole quote. I put it right here in the alt text. So this image now, Google looks at that and it knows what's, what it says on it. Um, okay, so this particular block, wait a minute here, it's called, this is the Yoast FAQ block. And, I'll, and what, how did I get the background white? I put it in, a uh, group block and then just went on down and added more things into it and I made that group block have a black a white background color so that's the only trick to it and I'll show you how to do that how I did that on another page it will make more sense if I show you from the home page so here's the home page and this again is a group block. See, it's a, that's just a group block. So what I do usually is I add one, this is a quote block in there. This is an HR, or actually it goes with a quote block. This is a, H, uh, a heading. And when you have a group, a, a group block like this, look at color settings, background color is white. And so that everything in that group block is white. And that's how I created the white background. 
This block here is um, the what she wanted on the very bottom of, it, of her website. But I'll show you on another page. I made that into a reusable block. Contact and Fleur is what I called it. And I'll show you that on another page. Go back to all pages. Okay, and we'll go back to your questions answered. So this block here, that's the image, but that's also part of this whole uh, floor. But let me show you this. It has, it looks like this, but it actually is the FAQ block. So if I go down here, Yoast FAQ. You can't put more than one Yoast FAQ on a page, just so you know that. So you can only have one series of blocks of Yoast FAQ. You can't put two on the same page. But um, it gives you a place to put the title, I mean, the main question and then the content. You can add images. You won't let you add uh, bullet points. So, okay, back to all pages. I'm gonna leave, I didn't wanna make any changes there. Listen to stories. So in this page, we have, I'm gonna view the page first, actual recordings. So, so we could play these recordings. So my sense is that there are all kinds of- So I'm not gonna play them all, but the recordings, there's a recording for each one of these. And there is a really, Good little block that you can add recordings. You go to your media library and upload an MP3 file. And then when you go to add a recording, you just go to the recording block and it's one of the blocks in the many different blocks we have. And you just, it'll immediately take you to the a media library and it'll only show you the different recordings and then you add, just add the one you want. It works the same, same, so easy. I'll do one right here, just to show you guys how easy it is. Um, audio, okay. Media library and it only shows you the different ones and you click one and there that recording is in there. Now we're not going to actually use that because our website is live, but that's how it works. Any questions on the recordings, adding audio recordings to a, to a website? Um, I don't see any hands. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do it. If you have, it won't take just any file. It has to be like an MP3. There's a couple different file types it will take. Um, and what she gave me originally were, they had a different, uh, they weren't MP3 files. There was something else. And I went online and I found an online service that will, I could upload her file and it uh, gave me an MP3 file, which I then downloaded and added to the website into the media library. Okay, let's look at some other pages on this website. Um, testimonials. This is how we did our testimonials, just like that. And this is a, I'm, I'm very pleased with this plugin. Easy testimonials. You can just add testimonials to it easily. It allows you to select how they look. So if you go to basic settings, Display. Um, Six setting. Yeah, this is a this is the style I picked for it, but you could change any of these. Uh, complimentary style, dark gray. See, it looked like that. There's some very of you know different ones. Go back to ribbon style blue, but there's a lot of different choices on that. So, and it's called easy testimonials. When you add a testimonial 
I'll show you how it looks with the testimonials. So you can put in, so on the testimonials, first of all, when I, I needed to put a white background on here, remember? Because her background is white. So I went to color settings on the paragraph and selected the white background. Um, and you put the client's name there. Uh, you put what, if their position is something there, or if sometimes you have locations reviewed, you can put that there. You can add a rating, a star rating. And all that gets taken into the schema markup so that Google knows that's an actual testimonial, which will help you rank. Any other questions on the testimonials plugin? Uh, nope, doesn't look like any questions. Okay. So uh, any other questions on the 2021 theme? I'm curious. I must have done a really good job or your guys are really sleepy. Uh, Steve Young. Yeah, um, I do a lot with video. Is, are there any features in here that would be a benefit in working with video? Yes. Video clip. Yes. Okay. Um, WordPress has wonderful buttons for uh, blocks for video. So let's go pretend we're going to add that to a page. Um, Let's go to resources. We'll pretend we'll add it on resources page. Okay. So let's go here. And then we search for blocks. I actually like to go up to this plus sign here because it has all the blocks and then you can really see things. And if it's a media, media you, you want to do an embed. And with that would be, these are all your embed blocks. So I just recently finished a website for a client who has a bunch of videos on Vimeo. And I use the embed, the Vimeo for the it. Um, there's also SoundCloud if you had, um, if you wanted to embed um, podcasts. But there is a YouTube embed. And you just put the URL here and embed it. That's really all there is to it. And then you can resize it from here too. So you can make it wide width or full width. But there's Thank really, you. there are so many different um, ways to embed video. I do not recommend putting a video on the WordPress in your media library and then trying to add it I did that for another client once and we uh, decided to stick with his YouTube connections because it was just, it, they came out so much better coming right off of YouTube or Vimeo than they do if they're actually embedded in your website. And it takes up a ton of space on your, in, in your media library. So don't add it to the media library. Has anybody ever put a Tumblr blog post on, uh, on their website? I've never done that, but I, you could embed Tumblr or TED Talks or I guess WordPress TV. I've never done that either, but you could do all that sort of stuff. It's pretty crazy how much you can do. This is with easy testimonials. When you add that plugin, you can add a single testimonial, which is what I did on this client's website, but you can also add a testimonial cycle and it'll cycle through all the testimonials. And you can select if you wanna have um, uh, a just specific category of testimonial. So like if you're just doing categories of, uh, let's say it's a restaurant or something and you wanna do testimonials on a specific kind of food that they make, you could do category of uh, testimonials on that uh, and then have several different categories of testimonials. 
and have them on different pages. Any more questions, Steve? No, thank you. Okay. Okay. This is, uh, I didn't even style this. This is a quote block. I thought it looked just fine and went with her theme very well, just the way it was. Uh, another quote block. I kind of like having the blocks where you can add, um, let me see. Let me send her just one this. Let's do this. Where you can add, this is a is a um, a block that is uh, what do you call it reusable. Basically, you take something, okay, maybe two or three blocks in this case, and then just and just make it a reusable block, and it's really easy to do in WordPress. Then you can use it over and over. And it, but if you do change it, like let's say I change this from contact to call or something, it would change it on all the blocks that use this particular reusable block. So you want to be careful about that. You have to group it first? Um, I did, yes. You don't always have to regroup group a reusable block, but I did in this case because it's one, two, three, four different blocks grouped together and then made reusable. Okay. Okay, guys, it is 728. So uh, we've got a couple of questions. Okay. All right. Uh, first up, uh, Daniel Payne. Yeah, so with page builders, um, like Gutenberg or WP uh, Bakery or Divi, I mean, there's dozens of them out there. It seems like uh, the whole layout of the site is going away from the theme and all towards page builders. Um, so in the future, are we even going to have the concept of a theme anymore? <laughs> or is it all going to be page builders? Hmm. I'm going to stop screen sharing. I think that's a really good question, but um, I'd like to see everybody's face while we're talking. <laughs> Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a debatable. That's a big debate. I would argue the opposite. Okay. I, I think that you're going to have the page builder functionality. It's going to be in WordPress, the block editor core. You're going to need less and less of the page builders in the next 18 months. That's my sense of it. Right, because because Gutenberg is just going to get better and better. There are more and more power. It's already pretty good. It's already pretty good, but it's going to get yeah. better. The page builders are still better, I think, but you know, you're, you got those you got those layers of code on top of it, and then when all the updates, you run the risk of these conflicts with your plugins, with your page builders, with your core. You get most of when they finally get to the full page editor in the core, right? You can do the global settings within core. You, you, do you really need all that extra page builder code on top of the core? So I argue it's probably going away from the page builders, not to the page builders. Yeah. You know, a lot of people talk about page builders, but you know, I always reference the page builder as being something that you can work on the front end right there so you can visually see it. And it's hard still to do that in Gutenberg. So I, I still look at Gutenberg as an editor, uh, not as a page builder. Any change, you know, when they get to the full site editing, um, I hope it does, you know, but that's my, that's my only issue I have with Gutenberg. It's just that what I see is not necessarily what I get when I go back over to the front end of the site. I agree, they're, they're not there yet, I, I agree. Hoping that uh, we're going to get to a point where a theme really means a theme, not the bent WordPress definition of a theme. 
a theme is really a layout of a website in general web development speak it, it, it doesn't in wordpress theme means how the back end tools look and how the header and how the footer looks and so it's kind of a disjointed use of the term term theme in my mind it always has been and that's that's why i struggled getting into the wordpress world so hopefully when they go to the full page editing in core um eventually hopefully at some point we can see where themes really just are a design set where somebody launches you in, from a launching pad so you don't have to start from scratch if you don't want to. At least that's what I'm hoping. I'll throw this out there real quick. I was in the New York City um, meetup dealing with uh, block-based themes. And I agree with a couple of gentlemen who said up to this point that it's not quite there, but they say eventually your themes are gonna be right in patterns. You're going to be able to build your themes within with the block editor and store them to be reusable in patterns. I'm guessing it's a year and a half away. A year. The question is, do you want where do you want to be in 18 months? But I agree, it's the page builders are still more powerful. And the things that these two gentlemen have said, I, I don't disagree with one bit. But I think that's where they're going in core. You're going to be able to have a full page editor. You're going to be able to build your themes. You're going to be able to store them in patterns. At least that's what they're claiming. Uh, Sue, you had a question. Uh, yes. So um, did you go over where you um, switched out the, um, the credits? Oh, I didn't. We have to cover that. Okay, I'll go back to sharing my screen again. Okay. Okay, back to sharing the screen. So it doesn't say powered by WordPress here. It says a website by Waterlink Web. Well, let's see how I did that. So the plugin I use for that is called Remove Footer, Footer Credit. And there's a little settings find it, I gotta find it, remove further cut. There it is, there it is, right here under tools. Once you add remove further credit, you'll get this. Okay, so the trick to this is to put the actual HTML coding that is in this, that's on the footer in. So if you just wrote powered by WordPress and didn't put the actual link in, with the, that covers the actual HTTPS going to wordpress.org. If you didn't put that in, it wouldn't work as well as what you're supposed to do is actually, when you look at that, you put that real content in, okay? Even though you don't see that HTML, you know it's there. So you put it in. And then when you go down here to put the, um, what you wanted to replace it with, do it in a text editor. And so I have the paragraph website by, and there's my Waterlink web. Okay, that's the link. And I made it a target as blank because I don't want, um, I don't want to, the client, somebody to leave the website. And so then we get that. And then you hit save and that's what appears is, the, is what you wanted. So that's remove further credit is your secret. Any other questions on that? Um, I don't see any other hands. There are other ways to remove further credit. Stop share. There are other ways to remove her to credit that if you go into the um, uh, this is the editor, but I don't feel comfortable telling people how to do that in this in this group. I'm, I could, I did it on my web on another website, but I think for for this particular level, remove her to credit plugin does what it needs to do, and it works just fine. Um, so Sue, you got your question answered. To Doug Howard, you had your question up hand up too, at some point. 
Well, yeah, my question had to do with uh, storing um, that thing at the end as a block. Is that part of the uh, Gutenberg editor where you can store? Yes, it oh, is. Just haven't seen it yet. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So basically, um, there's a way to add it to reusable blocks. Maybe see, I see if I can kind of duplicate that. I'll share my screen again. Just to kind of show you how, go to pages and I'll pick something under resources. Let's pretend I want to, let's pretend I want this to be a reusable block. So I cover both of them and uh, how do I do it now? <laughs> There's gotta be, oh, I click this. That's what I do. I click the three dots, add to reusable blocks. Oh, there it is. And then it'll give you a chance to name it. Yes. And so you name it. And so after that, when you go up to here, it will be in your reusable blocks. It'll be one of the blocks listed. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Power of object-oriented programming. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty, it's, uh, it works pretty well, works pretty well. Okay, well, I really thank everyone. Next month we have, uh, our, our speaker is going to be talking about translation plugins. And so that will be a really good one if you ever uh, have a client that you want to have uh, um, you know, add a, add a translation into their language to your website. That's that's going to be a great speaker. So great chance to see that. I want to watch that one for sure. So, okay, I think I'm done. And I want to thank everybody. Um, yeah, I, I just got a little thing. Ditch that and quat in your footer text. In fact, I think I'm going to do that right now. You know why that wound up there? Because let me go back to, let me share my screen again so you guys can see what I'm doing. Share screen. I saw that. So on this, on the tools. Okay, tools, tools, and go to remove for credit. Okay. This, I originally put in Uh, do not follow tag. And when I put that in, WordPress didn't like it and I removed it and, and put in some and quote thing. So that's what happened there. So yeah, you do want to remove that, save that. Okay. Stop share. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, nice presentation. Thank you. Very much so. Thank you. Um, so do all your sites have that small number of amount of plugins? No. Both of these sites are really simple. Um, I have other sites that have quite a bit more plugins, but I really try to avoid using a ton of them. So how, what's a lot of plugins for you? 10. Wow. I don't think I have one with, with probably less than 15 plugins. <laughs> nice. So um, I try to find plugins that'll do multiple functionality. If that makes sense. So sometimes I use a Jetpack plugin because it does a lot of different things. But I only turn on the stuff I need it to do. I don't turn everything on it. So for example, if I have a client that needs a uh, they need a, a, a privacy policy to show up on their website where somebody has to click, you know, it's uh, that they're, this, they're gonna be uh, information, if they have a website that information is being entered into, then I like the Jetpack plugin because it has a nice privacy policy and a little thing that comes up on the bottom. You can set it up so people will say, yes, I know this is keeping information on me. and. Um, so, you know, and then I'll use it for other things too. 
maybe for creating sliders on there, et cetera. So, but I try not to use a ton of plugins. I just finished a website that's a e-commerce website and has a subscription system and that people can only go to certain pages and it's far more complex and uh, it has more plugins. But I'll, I might talk about that one sometime, but not, not today. Okay. Well, I am going to tell everyone, thank you so much for coming to the WordPress meetup in Portland and Guatemala and wherever you're from, <laughs> California and uh, San Francisco. And thank you for our, our guest blogger here today. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's a WordPress help desk coming up February 9th and uh, Thank you guys for attending and you all had some great questions. I am going to leave. If you want to continue stay and talk, you can. Doug will probably stay around for a little while, but I'm going to take off. I hear my dinner being cooked by a very handsome man in my kitchen. So I need to attend to him. Bye-bye. <laughs>